So my name is uh, Joey Aiello. I am a brand new PM on the PowerShell team. Been with the company for about nine months and I've just had a complete blast uh, since I started. Really excited to be talking to you guys today about uh, some of what we're doing to re-engage, uh, not re-engage, but continue to engage and engage uh, more than ever before with our community. Uh, so this is uh, the PowerShell Community Engagement at a Cloud Cadence. So first, uh, this is kind of, kind of a little quick thing. Um, we're doing a PowerShell homepage. I don't have any mock-ups to share or anything like that yet, uh, but you guys should see something very soon. Basically, we, we've got a million things all over the place, right? We've got TechNet documentation, MSDN documentation, we've got the gallery, we've got our WMF downloads going up faster and faster. We got all this stuff on GitHub. We've got uh, Ed's blog, Hey Scripting Guy. Uh, we've got the PowerShell blog. Uh, we've got the Script Center. We've got Connect. And we've got all you guys, right? You guys are all kinds of awesome PowerShell.org stuff and you know all, all these awesome community blogs and community projects. And we, we want a place where everybody can go and, and find all this stuff. So it's it's been a little confusing in the past. We've realized, you know, finding everything, unless you guys are like right here come into the PowerShell Summit, you don't always know where to go for everything. So we're gonna try and make it easier for you. Keep uh, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, probably gonna be at something like Microsoft.com slash PowerShell. We're hoping in the next, uh, maybe even in the next month or so, that we, we might have something up. So um, keep your eyes peeled. Connect. How many of you guys have submitted a bug or a feature request on Connect? How many of you guys have seen that bug or feature request get resolved? Yeah. It was by design. not fixing the bug by design? So, uh, so as Jeffrey was saying earlier, you know, we, we really do make an effort to, to get these bugs closed. Unfortunately, the way everything's set up right now, it doesn't track as well as it should with our engineering processes. So we're working on that. Um, we intend to address feedback a lot more frequently we intend to at least acknowledge you guys that we recognize we've reproed your bug, that we're tracking it internally, that, that we intend to fix it. You know, we, we've got to be honest, sometimes stuff gets deprioritized. And you know, and like, like Jeffrey said, you know, your blocking bug, you know, might not be the thing that's blocking 10 other customers. So, you know, we, we've got to do a trade-off, but we, we do want to reach out and say, hey, look, we're working on it. Um, now, at the same time, you know, we got all this stuff going up on GitHub, we're gonna be talking about that more in a minute, uh, but where the code is actually being developed, we'd like to have the issues tracked in the same place. So if you guys are looking up at our stuff on GitHub, whether it's the script analyzer or, you know, the DSC uh, PowerShell package management resource, or, uh, you know, any of the numerous DSC resources that we put up recently, um, put an issue up there. And our hope is that if we aren't able to get to it, one of you guys will be able to get to it, and you'll see it gets closed, and you'll be able to track that right to a commit and, and, and see exactly what got fixed. So in the meantime, you know, we've, we've updated the interface a little bit, modernized it a little bit. Um, feel free to submit feedback on Connect on Connect. So if you guys are feeling like there's something that's too confusing, uh, you know, we, we recognize that the search uh, is not that awesome, or we're looking to get it improved, uh, hopefully pretty soon here. But, uh, but go ahead and just, you know, post, post a feedback, uh, feedback report on any, anything in the sky, or pie in the sky, I don't know. All right, what have we done Connect? So again, you guys, I know I only had two hands of, of stuff that got resolved, but we've done a lot. Uh, since the last WMF5, uh, and, and not all this stuff is, is necessarily out yet, but, but it's coming very soon, but uh, this definitely is. We've got ar archive commandlets for zipping and unzipping files. We've done a depth parameter for get child item dash recurse. So this is, uh, you know, you only go two layers deep or whatever. No new line parameter for all these commandlets. Uh, we did a format hex for doing uh, hex dumps of binary data. Uh, we've got a clear recycle bin commandlet that should be out sometime around now. Uh, we've done some clipboard commandlets for managing the clipboard. Bunch of bug fixes. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to go back and, and close those up, and so you guys actually know whether or not they're fixed, and you don't have to go out there and try on, on PowerShell five. But again, you know, we're we're ramping up on our engineering processes and trying to improve that. So Pester, big big tons of Pester talks, tons of good news about Pester. The first community-driven open source project ever 
to be released in Windows. Unbelievable. I mean, just seriously. Round of applause to, uh, to Dave, all of the contributors of that. This is just phenomenal that we are you know, shipping what we see as the de facto test framework uh, for PowerShell going right into the product out, out of the hands of our community. So, um, you know, we also, I know Jeffrey was saying, we got Jim Truer back. He's been a real, real big uh, evangelist eternally for, for uh, getting this push. So, you know, thank you to Jim for driving the effort. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys will see uh, in some of the new, new preview builds or the WMS pretty soon here, uh, Pester should be right in. So, again, this is unbelievable. These are the people that have contributed to Pester. All of these people have code in Windows now. I mean, that's just like, would have never, ever, ever, ever happened, even two years ago. I mean, this is just, we're so, so excited. And, and this list, we hope, is gonna grow. And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna continue to, uh, you know, push down new versions of Pester through some, some mechanism and, and, and really take those community contributions at such a rapid pace and, and get those right into Windows. So GitHub. Yes? Yeah, no problem. And I, that's awesome. So I actually, I, I just ripped this right off the, the GitHub today, the contributors, and, and just uh, did a little regex, got the, the bulleted list here, but yeah, this is. Did you do it in PowerShell? I, I did not do it in PowerShell, no. Well, it was, it was a find and replace with, uh, in my text editor. It was just one line, so, sorry. So, uh, GitHub, as we said, we open sourced all this stuff. Uh, if you guys were uh, as astute as many of our community members were, you would have noticed uh, that without you know, really strong messaging, we kind of pushed everything up on Thursday. So uh, it's all up there. Uh, we're officially announcing that you know, we've, we've got all this stuff on GitHub. Hopefully, you guys did some of this stuff at the hackathon the other night. Um, again, for these GitHub projects, we want you guys submitting feedback via GitHub issues on Connect. Um, we are taking contributions right now, so selectively taking pull requests for code, tests, documentation. Um, we ask that you be a little patient with us while we kind of figure out these processes. Not everything's perfect yet. Uh, you know, we're still learning a lot internally about how Git and GitHub and all this stuff works. Uh, and you know, feel free to, to give us feedback on how we can improve that stuff. Feel free to, to, to push up you know, uh, pull requests for, for any of the documentation that we have up there on, on using GitHub. Um, and you know, I want to do have a special call out. I don't know if any of you guys noticed. Vors uh, is our own Sergey Vorbev, who has just been a uh, huge, huge um, evangelist for for pushing this both internally and externally. Huge open source community uh, member. So again, we're taking contributions. We got this contributions.markdown file in the uh, the DSC resources repo. You might have seen me and me and Sergey bouncing back and forth this last week, uh, iterating on this thing, improving it. Feel free to issue uh, issue pull requests on our contribution guidelines. Um, you know it's a work in progress, but uh, anytime you guys have a question that's not answered in that document, that means it should be answered in that document. So uh, we're working on it. And again, thanks to Stephen Rossi and Dave Wyatt and, uh, and and many others for for their guidance in, in you know doing open source right, doing this out in the open, uh, taking contributions doing the documentation in the repos and, and, and giving us a lot of guidance on, on what it means to build production quality code uh, on GitHub. So this is a little freaky, right? You see this, holy crap, we're not all Git people, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're IT pros or, or you know, DevOps guys and, and, and sometimes all this Git stuff gets a little freaky. So don't look at this too detailed. I'm just gonna do a very high level overview of what's going on here. So basically, with Git, right, everything goes in a repository. You got all this code. Say we got the X Active Directory resource, right? It's going to have two long living branches. One of these branches is master, or we're always going to have stable production quality gold level code. Not yet, but very soon. Uh, and that's going to that's be where the latest stable release is going to live. All right, and on the other hand, we got this yellow branch, right? a lot more yellow dots, right, than, than there are blue dots. So we're not doing the stable, you know, we got to stabilize and, and get to the point where it gets to go into master. But in the meantime, all the active development is going into the yellow stuff. Okay, are you with me so far? Are we all good? Any questions yet? All right. 
So again, this, this blue branch is the one that's going out to the gallery every three or four weeks, right? It's the one we're going to publish from, and it's the one that gets a version number, okay? Yellow branch might be breaking tests, right? Might be unstable, got a lot of active development going on there. And then what we're doing is, and what you guys will be doing, is forking that yellow branch, right? So when you go into GitHub, you make a fork, comes right out of the yellow branch, and goes into your own pink branch, right? So we have a couple different pink lines, right? Anybody can go spin one of these up right now. And you can spin up multiple. Say you want to work on, uh, you know, a feature here or a test there, and you don't want that stuff touching itself, touching each other yet, then, uh, you know, you, you could have a, a couple of these forks, right? This is where you develop features. And then the idea is that when you're all done, you can make a pull request to that yellow branch, right? And we'll review it. We'll have, you know, for now, just PowerShell team members, but, but, but soon, hopefully, we'll have some, some community maintainers as people become more engaged. And those, those go into yellow, dev. And then after a period of time, when we decide we want to stabilize the yellow branch where, where we could be breaking tests or introducing some unstable code, we're going to fork that into the green. All right, we're going to stabilize that in green. You guys can help us do that. And then when we, when we deem appropriate, we're going to fork green, and, or excuse me, not fork green, but merge green back into blue, right? So the feature, the release branch will get merged into master. All right, so recap, real, real slow. Masters, our gold standard, stable release branch. Got all the crazy stuff going into yellow from all over the place. When you want to do your little feature, make a little pink one, the feature branch, push it back into the development branch. And then when we stabilize, we do that in that, in that uh, green release branch, all right? Is everybody with that? So, all right, cool. No questions? Awesome. What's that? Red, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's the hotfix branch, right? So occasionally we might find a bug uh, in, uh, in the stable, right? We don't, we don't, we, we're gonna try to make stable perfect, but you, know, you might find a security bug, and so you're gonna, you're gonna spin out a little red temporarily and then send that into both, both the yellow and the blue, right? Awesome, thanks. We'll do a quick demo here. This is the life of a pull request, right? All right. So I'm actually going to do this right now on stage. Uh, we're going to go up to the dev branch of XBed Locker, right? So this is one of our resources that's up right now, and uh, yeah, in the PowerShell repo. And I'm, I'm running my own account here. I'm going to go ahead and fork this branch, right? I want to make a copy. I'm going to put it into my account. Takes a few seconds, get this little animation. Okay, we're making a carbon copy. Great. Yep. Does that mean you're not creating pink dots? Yes, uh, so I just exactly, right? So so if we look back here. What was the question? Oh, excuse me. The question was, did I just make one of those little pink dots? Yep. The answer is yes. I just made a pink dot, right? It was that easy. Boom. Fork the branch. Yes. So actually, okay, very good question. So the question was, uh, how do we keep people from forking off of master? So um, I actually, when you fork, you fork the repository. You don't fork from the branch. So what I actually did is created a copy on my own account of both dev and master, right? So I've got both of those now in my account. And I can actually switch between them here at will, right? So we've got dev, we've got master, all right? So far, so good? All right, so now, so now we're gonna hop over to the command line, right? Put this over here, put this over here. Can you see both of these okay, big enough? All right. So I'm gonna use Surrey's awesome tool here. Just hop into my development, uh, Z location. You should check that out if you haven't. It's all gonna be in the notes. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a clone of my copy, right? And where I get this is right over here Right? On the right here, we have this HTTPS clone URL. Right? And I can just copy it just like that. Boom, copy. And I can say git clone that link. Boom. All right, so that's going to copy down that remote repository that's sitting up on GitHub servers on my local machine. 
and I have a Z bit or an X bit locker folder right here. All right, so I can go into there. Boom. This is exactly what was on that remote server. Next, I'm going to okay, navigate to it. Boom, I'm in the folder. So now, if you look, I've, I've got this posh git module installed, right? We've got some instructions up on our repository for how to install this. There's a bunch of different ways. You can talk to me or Dave or Steve or any of these guys. Great module, right? It basically tells me while I'm sitting in my repository what branch I'm in, what the status of that branch is, whether I've modified any files, right? So I'm in master right now. And if you remember, we want to be forked off dev, right? Because that's the one that's, that's the unstable active development branch. So I'm just going to do this right here. Git branch, this says create a new branch, call it dev, and then base it off of origin slash dev. And origin is basically the generic term or the, the most commonly used term for uh, the GitHub version of the repository, right? So if you remember, I've got that one sitting up on their server and I've got my own sitting on my local hard drive, right? And so I'm going to create a branch that's a copy of origins dev. Now if I want to switch to that, I'm going to say git checkout dev. I forgot this in my demo notes here, but I'm going to add it later. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Is the font okay? Yeah. It's the speakers in the staircase that are. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. No problem. Is that okay? Cool. All right, so I checked out dev, and if you see now, I just got switched from master to dev, right? And if I look, okay, I got a copy of everything now, right? Any questions yet? Cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open the README in my favorite, uh, favorite editor, Sublime, right here. All right, and we got a bunch of cruft in here from back when, uh, when we did the, um, the DSC resource kit, right? So a lot of this stuff isn't applicable anymore. And I'm just going to go ahead and just get rid of all this, okay? I'm going to save the file. Let's track over to my demo. And if I look now, over here, if I do, do a little uh, clear screen, okay, now Poshkit has told me, okay, you're still in the dev branch, but you also now have this, this modified file, right? So it'll tell me like added files, modified files, remove files. And if I do a git status, it's actually going to say, hey, you had this file readme.mark down. It's been modified, and you haven't staged those changes for a commit. Yeah, go ahead. Can you highlight the red text? Yeah, and this is kind of uh, unfortunately not awesome. <laughs> it kind of makes it hard with the projector. Change the background. It uh, it basically just says modified readme.markdown. But here we'll do um, we'll do black. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Kind of worked. <laughs> you can see that one at least now, right? No, you can't see the. Uh, oh, okay. It, it looks fine on my screen. I promise. <laughs> it's the uh, yeah, definitely the projector here. But this says this says modified readme.markdown. Okay, so it's just saying hey, you modified this file. That change has not been staged for a commit. All right. So what we have to do is say okay, it says no changes added to commit. Use git add basically the status these changes, right? So I'm gonna say git add readme.markdown. Okay, so now you see this color change from red to green, right? Hopefully you can see the green a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. So now we've said, okay, I've added no files, I've changed one file, I haven't removed any files. But it's green, which means I've staged the changes for commit, which means now when I do a commit, it's going to actually include that file. So I'm going to say, okay, I removed the old res kit disclaimers. Awesome. Now what this did is committed this to my local repository, right? So we're still in my local dev. I committed it here. And if you notice that that dev just changed from blue to green, right? And what that means is my local changes are out of sync with the GitHub servers, right? So that remote server it's got something different than what I've got because I've committed this new readme. It's not up on the servers yet. So again, if you remember that origin, right? That's the the, uh, the keyword for the remote server here. I'm going to say, whoop. I'm going to say git push origin. What this is going to do is push 
from my local to that remote origin server. All right, so if you look, okay, boom, it went to HTTPS, get up, blah, 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 and it went from my dev to origin's dev, okay? So if we hop back to my GitHub repository now, and I check out, okay, make sure I'm in, I'm in dev. Oh, and look, it actually had some JSON updated right here. It said your recently pushed branches dev. Okay, great. JSON, why did I say JSON? Ajax, Ajax, something like that, JavaScript, something. All right. So now if I look at the readme.markdown online, okay, all that stuff's gone, right? So that worked. Great, now what? It's in my local, or my remote repository, but how do I give that change to everybody? All right, so now I'm gonna make a pull request. And sometimes it seems a little weird, okay, pull request, but what I'm doing is I'm requesting that the, the, the authority, right, the upstream, which is the PowerShell accounts version, pull my changes into their repository. So I'm gonna go back here, I don't need the console anymore. I'm gonna say compare and pull request, boom. All right, so the base fork, this is PowerShell's dev, right? And where I'm trying to request changes to be pulled is from the head fork, which is Joey ALO's dev, right? So you can add some stuff in the comments here if you did a bunch of stuff that might be confusing, but you know, this is a pretty simple change. It's all pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a pull request. Awesome. So, it's telling me, okay, CLA not required. If you go push up a bunch of code, you might have a CLA. We'll have a bot that's going to go in there and say, hey, you got to sign this licensing agreement that says you didn't steal this code, that you know, you're okay giving it to us and all that kind of thing. But I don't have to do that. It's just documentation. So now, uh, we, we have this, this awesome, awesome tool that, uh, that Surrey has integrated. Some of you may have heard of called AppAir, right? AppAir is a cloud service that basically goes and runs bunch of checks, make sure that, that uh, my tests all pass, right? It's gonna run Pester, all this kind of cool stuff. So if we go look, it's actually doing a build right now. Nothing's really compiling, right? These are script modules, we don't use compilers here, but it's gonna go run this stuff and it's going to basically show me, oh, it's cute right now, okay, we'll give it a minute. But, um, but basically, well, let's see, I can just pull another one up. Yes? So at this point, our GitHub accounts would still do the same thing, and so our push would then go through tests and find out if we broke something or I just put Right, so the idea is, okay, I've just wrote, what's, oh, excuse me, so he's, he's saying, um, like, well, I'm, I'm actually not sure I can rephrase the question, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it in a fully complete way. Okay, so at this point, my pull request has, is nothing more than a request. Right? It's nothing more than a signal to the PowerShell community that like, hey, I've got some stuff over in my repository that you guys probably want, right? But when I do that, this app bear automatically recognizes that that request exists. And it's gonna spin up a VM somewhere in the cloud. It's going to install Pester on that VM. It's gonna pull down all the stuff that's in your repository, and it's going to run all my Pester tests. the pester tests that are in that repository. So there's a test folder, said my, my pester tests are your pester tests. The pester tests are the one that are in your repository in the tests folder, right? Yeah? There's also some standard tests that run against all the various. Yeah, and as what, what Dave said, thank you Dave, is that there's also some standard tests that run as well, which are located in another repo called dscresources.tests. Again, this is a lot of detail, I'm sorry. You kind of got to go end to end here, but it's all documented well in our in our repository. And if it's not, please fix it. Thank you. <laughs> so, let's see. This is still queued. So we got one here. X Web Administration, right? Somebody changed the README or something like that. Let's see one of these load up. Anyway, you're going to get some nice console output, right? That says like it looks like a PowerShell window, and it literally shows Pester being installed. It shows the common test being run. You see, so we got, okay, Chocolatey is installing Pester, right? Then it downloads all the stuff out of the repo, the t these common tests, right? It's going to invoke Pester, right? And then it shows you the output of the tests, right? And if it doesn't work, you're going to see a bunch of red. And we're probably not going to take your pull request. 
So at that point, you need to go make another commit, fix everything, make another commit to your own repository. The pull request will automatically update itself and app error will run again, right? And then you can go check on the build. Yep, Dave? That is absolutely true. So what Dave said is you might actually add a test to your repository that's going to break the build because it's a bug you found, right? So if you found a bug in our development branch and you go write a test to point out that the bug exists, then you might actually submit something that looks like it's breaking the build, but it actually just is basically a bug report that says, hey, I have this new test that shows that your stuff's busted. So at that point, you know, we're, we're gonna still be examining these, these requests. And if you think that, you know, the request should go through, you know, put that in your description and we'll, we'll look at it and, and, and figure everything out, okay? But yeah, you get this awesome, so, you know, this one's running right now. It's probably in the middle, right? But whatever, it's, it's, it's gonna pass. All we do is change the documentation. All right, so basically, after all that, right, you've done everything, you've done all your due diligence, you've seen that the tests have passed, right? It's gonna show up on a dashboard for us. All right, we're gonna go, and basically, you know, this, is, this right here is a, a pull request that Dave submitted, uh, like two hours after uh, our GitHub repositories went up, something like that. Uh, we said, hey, you know, you did this weird thing with the version, don't do that, I'll target the dev branch. Half an hour later, Dave's like, all right, it's fixed ready to merge it. So, you know, if you look, okay, he's got all this stuff he did, right? Sergey's going back and forth with him. We had another team member of Beak say, hey, this all looks good to me. This guy originally uh, did a bunch of this stuff in the resource designer. And, uh, and the CLA is verified, right? We have legal approval on this. So we're gonna just go ahead and merge it. All right, and if you look, this was uh, 640 lines of code, 419 deletions, all right? It's a huge chunk of code. And, uh, and this is now in the official version of the XDSC Resources Center. So, you know, thank you, Dave. And thank you to everybody else for contributing to the XDSC Resources Center in All right, this is awesome. This is so cool. Like, we're just, we're just giving, giving each other code back and forth. It's, it's, it's so exciting. So again, we go back to my little example here. I kind of got derailed because I clicked on that tab, sorry. Got my, my thing here. I'd wait for it to turn green, but I know it's good. It's gonna be green. Now, as, as the PowerShell administrator, I can merge the pull request. The pull request is now closed, and I can delete my branch that I spun up before. I don't need it anymore, right? My, my version, because it's in the official version. So let's go ahead and delete it, and, uh, and now that's, that's in the official code, just like the, uh, the XDSC resource center. Are you, are you gonna be deleting it, Dave? Okay, so he said if you had set up an actual feature branch, it makes more sense to delete it, but because it was my active dev branch, he probably wouldn't have done what I just did, but that's okay. You can keep it, you can get rid of it, doesn't matter. Any questions? How awesome is this? Awesome. So yeah, it's merged, right? So after a couple weeks, we're gonna get all this stuff in the development branch, we're gonna fork that out, go stabilize it. We're gonna push that into master, App Bayer is going to run some tests on the master build, make sure we're good to go. And then uh, every three or four weeks, we're just going to publish those straight out to the gallery. So now, yep. What does stabilizing the release branch mean? So you said, what does stabilizing the release branch mean? So this means that we're going to have uh, expert maintainers who are making sure that all the tests are written, all the, uh, there's, no, there's no big bugs, the whole thing is, is uh, you know, up to production quality, so to speak. And we'll be defining that in more details as we kind of work through this. This is a work in progress. Again, we kind of, it's a lot of uncharted territory that we're uh, you know, charting for the first time, at least for us at Microsoft. And, uh, and you know, we, we ask again, be patient with us in the meantime. But, but it means that you know, basically a bunch of people have looked at it and, and all our tests pass, our test coverage is good, and, and so on and so forth. And again, so after that happens, you know, App Bayer is going to run its tests, the build's good. We're going to publish out to the gallery. And that means that even the people who don't necessarily want to contribute or don't know Git or don't want to use GitHub, they're still going to reap the benefits of all this 
going on, right? So, so you know, for those of you in the room that want to use Git, we, we can't wait to get your contributions. And for those of you who don't, you're just going to get that much more code that much faster onto your machines. So we're really excited about the implications of this, and um, you're going to start seeing a lot more stuff uh, hopefully come up to the, uh, the GitHub repository very soon. We're very bullish on, on the community, and, and we think it's going to be a great one. Right, so, uh, so what Dave said is even if you don't want to do all that stuff, right, say, say you just want to file a bug report, right? X bit locker here, we've got, we've got the, uh, the issues button here, right? You can just open a new issue, say, hey, I'm, I'm working on this thing, you know, uh, I've got it over here in my branch. You know, you, you want to track your work, right? Or you might say, hey, uh, you know, I noticed this thing's busted. I don't know how to fix it, but somebody probably should. And, you know, any of you guys can go out there, look at the issues and go, oh, look, this bug, okay, I'll fix that. And then when the pull request gets merged, you can uh, simply close the issue and, and everyone knows it's fixed. So it's this, uh, you know, just really incredible opportunity for people to be, to be reporting bugs, requesting features, and, and having, you know, not just us, but you guys, uh, you know, fixing them and implementing them. So um, in addition, I want to, yep. You, you are way ahead of me. Um, so what Heyman, Heyman is pointing out is that say you don't like all this command line stuff, I mean, we're PowerShell, right? But like, say you don't like all this command line stuff, right? You just, you notice a typo in the documentation, you just wanna go fix it, right? So basically I open this up, okay, readme.markdown. All right, this is what it's rendered as, right? The raw version's right here, right? Okay, this is like the actual markdown, whatever. This button right here, edit this file, super simple, right? I have right permissions because I'm an owner of the repository or whatever, but basically when you guys click this button, all that stuff I did before, forking the repository, cloning in, blah, 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 all happens in the background, right? And I just get this awesome little text editor, I can preview the changes, go back and forth, see what's different, okay, there are no changes, but whatever. So I go, okay, um, you know, I want to get rid of, uh, oh, we're in master right now, so this is going to be, whoops. <laughs> so I'm going to go into dev, right, okay, read me. I didn't see my changes, so I knew there was something up. So, okay, you know, oh, you know, maybe I don't like, uh, I don't like this. I want this to be less indented, whatever, I'm cleaning something up. So now, I mine's going to say at the bottom, you know, and I, I can, again, I can preview changes now that I've done that. So there's going to be a little green, a little yellow. Oh, you changed this part. You can see this little, it's probably invisible on the projector, but there's a little highlighted part, whatever. I go to the bottom, I can add my description, and I can say commit, I can say commit changes. You guys will say create pull request, right? That's what the button's going to say right there. And uh, you just go boom, the pull request will show up just as if you did all that stuff before. Um, real easy, right? And in fact, you know, if you guys can actually edit the code in the same way here. So if you don't want to use all the, the uh, command line stuff, you know, you go do it yourself in the ISC and then you just copy paste it and you know, things should be good. Cool. Yes. There's live members looking at this code too to prevent somebody from interjecting code that works and it's actually malicious. So the question was, are there, uh, which members now? Yeah, so, so there are people looking, the question was, are there people looking at this code to make sure that no one's injecting anything malicious? And the answer is yes, yeah, so we, we are gonna be the ones uh, for a while that are, that are the gating factor on whether code you know, gets merged in. You can't just push code into our repository and have that show up on the gallery as like super duper Microsoft certified. Um, you know, we recognize that some of these resources aren't totally up to snuff. You know, we wanted to get a lot of stuff out there, that's why they're experimental. Uh, but we plan on improving the quality and, and uh, you know, at, at some point, as uh, Stephen Morawski has, has been, uh, you know, encouraging us, uh, we, we may make, you know, certain modules for certain domain experts, you know, community maintainers. So in other words, you know, we, we might have some people that if the community coalesces around, you know, somebody really, really contributing heavily to an Active Directory module that's a super Active Directory pro, um, you know, we, they might get to be one of the guys who signs off not the only guy, right, but one of the guys that signs off on, on that code going into the repository. So we're excited and, you know, this is kind of all stuff we're feeling out and we'll see how it goes. 
So yeah, really exciting. Life of a pull request. Uh, it only took us what thirty minutes. Uh, that's, uh, that's all right. It'll be it'll be quicker. You get used to it. I've only been ramping up on this stuff in the, the last month or two, and and I'm sure you guys are, are way smarter than me. So. Anyway, so now lands in the gallery, right? Awesome. It's in the gallery. So uh, right now we're the only ones that can publish the gallery. Probably a couple of you have uh, you know publishing access. We've been kind of trickling it out to the MVPs, uh, but we intend to start accepting public contributions to the gallery uh, by the end of May. So you know, again, no promises here, but that's our intention. Um, <laughs> You know, again, for those GitHub contributions, the bare, bare minimum bar is going to be that the pester test pass. Uh, but for what you guys are publishing, we intend uh, to have the script analyzer uh, be a bar of the gallery. Now, I know a lot of you guys have played around with the script analyzer. If you're not familiar with it, um, it's it's what we call a linting tool. Um, it's basically something that that checks checks the code and makes sure that you know most best best practices are followed. You know, things are syntactically all in place and there's nothing doing anything malicious or, you know, no, um, you know, types are where they should be and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, this is still a tool we're working on. It's actually a tool that's available on GitHub, all source code. Uh, feel free to contribute to it where you think it needs some help. Um, and, and, you know, at, at some point we intend for the script analyzer to be, you know, a full script analyzer pass, no errors, uh, will be the minimum bar to publishing in the gallery. Um, yes? So the question was, is that just for the contributions coming from uh, Microsoft into the gallery or from anybody into the gallery? Question? Okay. And the answer is anybody. Okay. So, um, you know, yeah. That, that scares me just because uh, I've looked at Script Analyzer and what it does, and I'm not a huge fan yet. And just given the work that I do with modules, I just don't see how that's going to necessarily flow nicely together. I mean, it's just a concern. But um, something that raises alarm in my head in terms of, I don't know if I would go so far as to say no errors are precious. So the, the, uh, the question, so to speak, was that, that that's a little worrisome because of the quality of the script analyzer and the way that a lot of the errors have been uh, written, a lot of the rules have been written, excuse me. Um, so I, I hope that you continue looking at the development of script analyzer. We, we got a lot of very strong feedback about the verbosity of the rules and how many rules were errors, and uh, we've toned it down a little bit. So there's a lot less error level rules. Um, a lot of those rules also were there were a couple bugs that were making making rules show up that that you know definitely weren't should have been errors, um, and that was kind of our, our very early early release, and, and we've we've corrected many of those problems and continue to correct many of them. And we uh, Kenneth, I think you had some that. Yes. So he says, file, file the issue. It's on GitHub. You know, if, if there's a rule that that's, shouldn't be an error, we want to hear about it. So, um, you know, we, we, don't in, we don't want this to be a such a gating factor that, that quality code doesn't make it through. Right? So, I mean, me at least, I feel like erring on the side of, you know, stuff coming through is, is potentially better. But, um, you know, we, we want to capture all that feedback, so, so please, please tell us about it and get up issues. Since Script Analyzer was moved to GitHub, is it now is it having Yellow support or is it still V5 only? Uh, it's still V5 only. I don't have anything uh, down level wise to talk on right now. Um, but yes, it's, it's uh, at least the development, the active development of it has moved to GitHub. So it's not like necessarily the place that you download it. Um, it'll probably be in the gallery very soon. Yeah. And, um, may or may not be in WMF, I have nothing to speak on right now, but um, it's, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Yes, Steve. I'm just curious how you're going to enforce those publishing barriers, so because the gallery is just a new guy server, so is it going to become curated kind of like chocolate where somebody has to put it through to get it to show up the results? So the question is, um, it's still an open repository that someone can published to, um, how are you going to do that? How are you going to keep people from publishing to it? Um, are you just going to omit it from the search? 
Uh, we're kind of still working it out, but we, we work pretty closely uh, with the Nougat team and, and we're, we're doing some custom stuff here and there. We've got publish module right now is the primary way to publish and that may be the only way to publish, but you know, I, I nothing definitive right now. Yes? Uh, so the question was, if I ask me to GitHub, how will, how will publishing work? Will it be easy to pull something off of GitHub and publish it in? Um, so right now we do have a limitation that WMF5 uh, does not run on AppAir. So there's no way for AppAir to be the thing that publishes out. Um, you could write a PowerShell script pretty easily. Right now the primary way to publish to the gallery is using a command line called publish-module that's included with PowerShell Git. Um, so you know you would basically, if the module is in your PS module path, you do a publish dash module, it pulls it from there, throws stuff in the gallery. So, yeah. Yes, Dave. Okay, so he said uh, PowerShell Git goes down level to three, not officially yet, but you obviously got it working. Uh, threw it on a, threw it on the uh, in the repo. You said? Yes, there's a copy of it. So there's a copy of it in the Pester repo, and, and they actually use it to publish out on App Fair uh, automatically that way. So my word for you guys: feel free to try. Again, we're we're, we're getting PowerShell Git down level to three, but it sounds like you can get it up and running if you uh, are so inclined. All right, um, DSC for Linux. Uh, we work really closely with the team here uh, in, the, in the open source technology uh, group. We're really glad to see, um, I don't know if you guys saw Richard's talk earlier on uh, DSC and I know my on Linux, but uh, really, really cool stuff. Um, we have a lot of new stuff in the pipeline. Um, again, another step towards, towards Microsoft's commitment to these heterogeneous environments. Um, it's going to allow you to, and, and, and I know there's a, there's a community technical preview out there. Um, we have a new release coming soon. I can't say when that is, but keep your, keep your eyes peeled. Um, but yeah, you're going to be able to manage packages, file content, services, users, groups, all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, have your familiar PowerShell and DSC syntax in a script. Uh, I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, again, this requires OMI. I know some people were asking earlier about there being binary versions of OMI because it's kind of hard to get up and running right now. Uh, we're definitely taking that feedback back to Redmond, so thank you. Um, yes? Um, two questions, actually. Two questions. First one, is there any kind of momentum push discussion to get it from like Open Group onto GitHub? So the question was, is there any push to any push to get OMI onto GitHub? Also, some feedback uh, that we have heard loud and clear since getting here, um, and definitely some feedback we're going to take back to Redmond and see what we can do. So. It's just, it's no community with OMI. Yeah, so he's saying no community with with OMI right now. It's it's. Uh, I think the language you used during the talk was that it was a little dead. Um, it's not dead. We no, are working on it, but yes, the community has been. Yeah, I, I know. I hear you loud and clear. So. Um, we, we definitely, you know, we'd like to take contributions, that sort of thing, um, but maybe not yet. Yeah, hopefully soon. So the second part of that is, what about o OMI, what about getting it uh, Linux ARM support? So the other question was uh, getting OMI Linux ARM support. Uh, I have no clue. I'm going to have to ask. So um, Nothing right now, but I don't know if that's in the pipeline. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and these are going to be, by the way, so if you can get OMI up and running after you compile it using uh, Richard's awesome white paper that he was talking about today, um, you can install a native uh, package RPM dev, uh, one of those, for this, uh, this version one of DSC that's coming very soon. So these are the resources that are going to ship with there. You got Linux versions of archive, file, file line, package, user group, script, service, environment, and SSH authorized keys. Notice a lot of these look very similar to the ones that we have built into Windows. Obviously, we have a couple Linuxy ones that aren't going to exist in the Windows world, but uh, you know we're, we're trying to get we're trying to get you know pretty pretty similar syntax so that if you're comfortable with DSC already, 
uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be too hard to, to pick this up and, uh, and you know, work in your heterogeneous environments, which uh, are becoming more and more common, as we all know. And uh, just a quick little example configuration. You guys see this okay? Yep. It's more on my screen. Um, so if you see, like, we got configuration, same as PowerShell, node, same as PowerShell, and next package, that's the name of our resource. We got a resource instance name, properties, key value pairs. It's all the same kind of stuff. So, you know, we're, we're really excited that uh, this is coming out soon, and definitely, uh, you know, keep your eyes peeled at night. Yeah, he's excited back here. Any questions? Awesome. So this is my contact info. Uh, feel free to bug me. I'm really, really uh, sometimes super responsive, sometimes not so much, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, just really glad to be here. Really, really just unbelievable community, and I'm so glad to be a part of it. So glad to, uh, to have joined this, this company and this team. And, you know, we're, we're really, really optimistic about, about the future of what you guys, uh, what we're going to be able to do with, with your guys' help. And, and uh, yeah, this is a really exciting time. So thank you so much for being here. And have a great rest of your week. Oh, yes, uh, we have stickers up in the front.